Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, he didn't know me. <laughs> yeah. Um, is anybody here who haven't heard of FOF before and doesn't know what it is? No? You? Okay. Uh, come on. So, just a short introduction to get everybody up to speed. FOF is a rapid application development framework. Um, you can use it to create uh, Joomla components using very little to no code. It's all based on convention over configuration, which means that if you're following the conventions uh, which are used by the framework, you don't need to create explicit code to uh, make anything happen. It will be done automatically for you. So in this session, I'm going to create a, a small component to demonstrate exactly what convention over configuration mean and how you can create a component with about, uh, I think it's less than 100 lines of PHP code. Uh, this component that we're going to create is a simple contact component. Um, you have uh, different uh, contact categories like uh, support requests, bug reports, internal communication, whatever. Um, from the front end, your users can submit uh, a contact request. It's recorded in the database. It's sent to you by email, and you can also go through the back end and take a look at the, at the contact request and do whatever with it, even delete it if you don't like it. Okay? So, in FOF, we begin with modeling our database first. That's why I have my, my database window and not my ID open. Um, the first thing we, we need to understand is that in our component, we need two tables. We need one table to store the contact categories and one table to store the, the contact items themselves. The convention for naming tables in FOF is using the database prefix, the component name, and the table name in plural. So I'm going to name our component com underscore contact us. One word, right? Contact us. Uh, so if I want to uh, create um, a new table here, it's going to be our prefix demo underscore contact us underscore categories. So let's see what are the fields that I'm going to create in this table. Um, first, I will create a, a not to increment ID, which is uh, used to identify its individual record. And the convention for naming those identifiers is using the, con the component name, contact us, underscore the table name in singular, which means category in our case, underscore ID. And you can give it a type, begin to gear, unsigned, not null, and auto increment. Next thing that we will need in our uh, category is a title. Uh, by convention, we'll, when we have a title in an FOF table, we name the field title and we declare it as a varchar. Not null with an empty default value. Um, in this particular case, I have thought that uh, I will add an email which will be um, the email that this contact request will be sent to. So for each category, you can have uh, the request sent to a different email. For example, you don't want the developers to get the support requests because they will just get uh, enervated. Uh, and you don't want uh, the support guys to get the bug reports because they will have no idea if it's a valid bug, valid bug report or not. So same here, not null, default, empty. And since these are categories, and I'm going to show them in the front end, I want to be able to define, uh, to define the order of those categories, right? Which one goes first, which one goes last. So 
I'm creating this magic field called ordering. Declare it as an integer. Um, not null, default, eps, default, zero. Uh, so another thing, probably I want to take down a category. I don't want it to be published because it's something that I created and then I changed my mind. So I'm going to use a, a field to declare if this item is published or not. By convention in FOF, this is called enabled and not published, but it's something that you can always use if you want. Let's declare it as a tiny int, not null, default, zero. Now, oh there, now I can see my notes. It's a good idea to know who created, modified, or checked out this item and when, right? So in order to make sure that we know who created the item, created on, oh, come on, auto-completion sometimes is really stupid, created on daytime, not null, default, the MySQL null date, okay, created by, this is like uh, what you have typically in Joomla, right? Mm -hmm. The created? Cre uh, yeah, you can have it, it's just an integer. <laughs> but if you have it as just an integer, then you're limiting the maximum user ID. And there's no point doing that. So int or big int, it's not going to change the performance of the table. Uh, by two bytes for every record, how many records are you going to have? Huh? A million? So it's two megabytes more? A billion? Then you, uh, if you're talking about a billion records, then yeah. And now this is uh, who created the record. Let's do the same thing with modified. FOF will automatically handle those fields. And we need the, the checked out fields in FOF. The default convention is calling them locked on and locked by instead of checked out date. What's it called in Joomla? Checked out date and checked out by. It makes more sense to call them locked on and locked by. It's fine. We have the same convention virtually. Yeah, because it. Because it makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's natural language. Uh, oh, I forgot to declare the primary key for my table, which is, of course, the auto number field. Contact us. Category ID, right, and uh, default car set UTF 8. And let's run this query. Our table is created. It's right over um, here. Of course, you cannot see it if you're sitting in the back. Sorry about that. Did you specify the database name, like no delay on my item? It it's indifferent to me. Okay. Uh, I know that my server defaults to, should default to inodb. Okay. Let me check. Yes, it's inodb. So now we're going to create the second table that we need, which is the actual contact items. So let's create table demo, contact us, items. As I said, the uh, table name is always plural. We will need an auto number ID so that we can reference this field this record, sorry, item ID 20, unsigned, not null. We need to know which category this item belongs to, right? So 
we're, ad we're adding a kind of foreign key which isn't really declared as a foreign key. But of course, you can do a proper foreign key in MySQL. The only problem. Yeah. Yeah, and they're using the ra the Ruby on Rails convention. Yeah, it's 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 also the Ruby on Rails. Yep. Uh, unsigned? No. You you cannot have a negative uh, auto increment ID. And unsigned means it, it's always plus. It is doubling the whole space, but you have a minuses again and plus, so it's doubling the... Yeah, you, you can have uh, how many trillions, do you remember by heart? No, a few trillion records, yeah. Much bigger than what we have uh, for storage in all of the laptops in this room. So yeah, uh, since this is a contact item, I also need to know who sent the contact his name and his email address. So we have two fields, let's call them from name. Yeah. And from email, as you can understand, my choices for naming are not very good. We also need the subject of the contact item and the actual message. So let's create another two fields, subject, farcar 55, not null, default, none. <coughs> and let's say body, medium text, not null. And of course, mm, we can have the standard fields created, modified, and logged because we might want to, to know if a logged in user created this contact item, which one of the administrators edited it, or if it's being checked out. So I'm going to type the standard fields created on daytime, not null, default, then null date. This is the boring stuff for creating a component. Yeah, I could do that, but then I would have to, to show the entire code of the component. And I want to show you how I built it. That's why I asked for a double length session. Otherwise, I could do that in <laughs> 20 minutes. Modified, modified. Locked and locked. Primary key. Okay. Default car set. Uh, and okay, now we have our two tables. And we can set down our SQL tool. Right. So let's begin writing the actual component. I'm going to develop this directly on a Joomla 3.1 site, uh, which means that in order to be able to see the component I'm developing at all, I, it has to be installed. Otherwise, Joomla throws a 404 component not found. So I have already created a backend uh, this thing reads administrator components com contact us and I have created a very basic XML file where I have commented out everything except the uh, backend directory and I have created a very simple contact us.php file which is completely empty. So let me go to my site. I have already gone to extensions, uh, extension manager, discover, select this pretty much empty thing and choose install. And now let's access 
our new component, which does absolutely nothing, but at least we know that it loads. So this is going to be an FOF component, which means that we need to load the FOF library because it's not loaded automatically by Joomla. Uh, that's a very good question that I forgot to answer. If I'm lucky and I can connect to the network, um, you have to reconnect to the Wi-Fi because I have to change the password. Okay, so it's this one. Yeah. It probably won't ask. So click on the uh, network preferences. Uh, join other network. Um, I have to make it forget uh, uh, network first. Yes, I know. No, I won't. Yeah, okay. <coughs> okay. And then um, select the list, join other network. You have to enter manually. Okay. Let's do oh, underscore. <laughs> <laughs> underscore. Okay. Oh, no, it's. Uh, Okay, now hopefully we have internet. So you can go to, come on, to akibabackup.com, download. Yeah, waiting. You should see FOF stable here. But if you're feeling lucky and want to try the latest dev release, Scroll all the way down, and we have the dev release. In either case, just click on FOF, and you can select the, the version you want to download, download the installable package, and install it like any extension. Or you can install any of my extensions, but then you have to trust that I'm using a good release of FOF. <laughs> This is not always the case, because my extensions uh, only use a subset of, uh, of the features. If there is a bug in, in something else, you might get a broken release. I can't guarantee anything. So always check either here or the dev releases. So back to the code. Uh, we need to load the FOF library because Joomla won't do that for us. And it's very simple, just require once jpath libraries fof include.php. Uh, and the next thing that we want to do with an fof component is tell fof to create the application and run it. And this is done by doing fof Dispatcher, get TMP instance, the name of our component, com contact us, dispatch. Now, if we try to load this, we'll get an error because we have not defined uh, a default view. There, there are no views defined right now, so it, it dies. Uh, let's fix that. Let's create a view that lists all of our um, contact categories. So let's go back to our files. Let's create a folder. Come on. You can create a folder. It doesn't want to create a folder. No, there it is. Let's call it views. inside it. My computer doesn't like me today. Categories. Now, you see, I'm using the same view name as the last part of the table that I had created. Because I'm following, oh, come on. I'm following the FOF conventions. So at some point, my computer will allow me also to create 
a director named TMPL. Now, as you can see from what I'm doing, I'm not creating a controller, I'm not creating a model, and I'm not creating a view class. That's because since I'm following FOF's naming conventions, it's automatically created for me. Both the dispatcher, which handles the entire application and decides which view to display and which task to display, the controller, which will uh, get all the data and create the model and the view, the model, which does everything from querying the database to modifying the database, etc., and the view, which is supposed to take the view template and display it to me. All these are automatically done by FOF, and of course, if you want to, you can override that. But in this very small example, we're not going to write any PHP code because I don't feel like it. So I just said that I'm not going to write any PHP code. So how am I going to create a view to show the list of records in the database? I'm going to, to use a feature of FOF, which is called XML forms. And I need to zoom in my notes so that I can see what I'm doing. Yep, much better. So let's create a new file. And we're going to call it um, form default, default .xml because something isn't printed in my notes. And hopefully Coda will Mm? I don't know why I did it. Why I named this? Uh, why I, call, I think I call the next one form.xml.xml. You so shouldn't? That's the edit view. You should. That's a, that's a different view. I'm trying to create a browse view, but Coda doesn't want to open the file, so I'm going to do it the old school way. Uh, <laughs> normally, I'm using NetBeans. The problem is that NetBeans has so much of my own stuff open right there right now that if I try to clean it up to do a presentation it will take me about a, a day yeah so there I have my empty file and I'm creating XML version 1.0 encoding UDF8 I am creating a form Yeah, talking and typing isn't as easy as it sounds. So this form, I'm going to tell FOF that it's of type browse because, oops, browse, because I'm going to display a list of records. Um, I want to show the, the header of the, of the table list, which tells me what the field names are and allows me to change the ordering and stuff like that. Um, I also want to show the filters so that I can filter my records, let's say by title. Um, I want to show the pagination at the bottom of the page. Uh, by the way, everything I type, hopefully there will be documentation by the end of the month. I'm still writing it. It's in a better place than it used to be a month ago. And if I have no rows, I want FOF to show me a placeholder using this language string, com contact us, right, common, no records, okay. Now, let me create a header set. A header set defines the header fields that are shown at the top of the table. I'm creating the first header field. The name is ordering because this is going to be my drag and drop or reordering uh, handle. Uh, in Joomla 3, FOF automatically creates for you the Ajax-based drag and drop uh, stuff using uh, Joomla's own JavaScript. The type of the field is ordering. 
it's a sortable field because I want to be able to sort my table based on that field and the table width is going to be 1% because I want to be very narrow. It's just a handle. So let me create the next header field. Come on. This is going to be our ID field. Contact us. Category ID. As you understand, all the name attributes that I'm giving to my header fields are the same as the uh, field names that I've given in my database table. By the way, FOF automatically knows which table I'm referring to because it's com contact us and the view is categories. So the table will be prefix contact us categories, the table we had created before. The type of this header field is going to be a row select, so it shows me mm, the checkbox that I tick to select all of the records. And the table width I want for this is 20 pixels. Then I'm going to create a header field for my title. The type is going to be a field searchable and this means that uh, it's going to create a, what's it called, a, a filter field, a, an edit box where I can type um, the, a, a part of the title and it will search for it. I also want it to be sortable because I want to be able to reorder, to, to, to sort the table by title. Uh, I don't want to show, re um, what's it called, uh, submit and reset buttons. Okay. I will also need to show the email that I have assigned to this particular category. It's going to be the same thing, a uh, field searchable. Also sortable and no buttons. Okay, mm. so let's also create oops, a header field for the enabled column. Oh, come on. <laughs> Type published. This will automatically create a drop-down box, published and published, sortable to, and table width basically 8%. Okay, these are my headers, and uh, now let me create... Hmm? So yep. sortable, you use the word true, and of of, uh, higher, it shall have a show field if you use one. Where? Yes, over here. Yeah, the attributes on the form are different than the attributes on the on the fields. On the fields, they, uh, I could use one here as well. Okay, works both ways. Or I could use yes. Um, uh, one yes. Yeah, that that's pretty much okay. all um, that I'm supporting. Just wondering if there is, if it makes a difference. Yeah. So the next thing is that I want to create a repeatable area in my form where all the records are going to be shown. So I'm creating a field set with a name items. This is mandatory no matter what your table is called. And I'm doing the same thing with field instead of header. Name equals ordering. By the way, it's, a, it's very important to make sure that you're creating the fields in the same order as your header fields, otherwise you get a very funny display. I'm also going to give a different class to this field. That's the CSS class here. Then I'm going to create field name equals contact us category ID. select row so that it creates the, the checkbox. 
Now we need a field for the title. This one is a text field. And in this particular field, I want the text to be clickable. And when you click on it, I want the edit page to appear. So I'm going to tell FOF to show me a link. And the URL of the link is going to be index.php option equals com contact us and the view equals category. If you're using a singular view name, it's going to be an edit view. If you're using a plural category name, it's going to display a list. And of course, I have to tell it that the ID is the ID of this item. Using this bracket syntax, you can uh, put different fields in here. So you can reference them in, in the URLs. For example, you could have a front-end URL to open a preview of an item or link to a category. No. Okay. It doesn't know what you mean. So you could assume that it's yet. Yeah. It, has, it doesn't know yet. Yeah. Do you use the end, end because of the XML? Yes. <coughs> if you use the uh, straight ampersand, it's not going to work. It's going to cr XML. it's going to crash during XML parsing. Yep. Um, why not use the S base component? Why create another? Yes, that's a good question because I want to I want to demonstrate a component using two tables. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else that I could present in two hours. <laughs> and there we have it. Now our view is ready. So let's open it. OK, as you can see, um, we need to define the missing language string. But other than that, you get a tab over here, which uh, contains our category names, our, sorry, our view names. And as we add more views, these tabs are going to, to be added. Uh, we have our filter field. If the display was wide enough on the projector, you would actually see that the filters are on the left-hand sidebar, and everything else is to the right of the page. But because our resolution is very, very small, we can't see that. But I duplicate toolbar. Hmm? Uh, yes, probably. The I just noticed that on my localhost too. Yeah. But Who broke the build? Only on new, only on new component. Yeah. Yes, obviously. Uh, you can find the bugs and we pull request, and I will uh, fix it uh, during the session. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Ma Matt and Michael dared me to do that. So if, if you can find the bug in the next uh, one hour and 10 minutes, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm still trying to find someone who can do unit tests. Anyone volunteering? No. no. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we have our first view. Uh, the next step is to create an edit view so that I can click the new button, because right now, when I click new, it's probably going to explode. Yeah. So let's go back to Coda. And let's create a new view called category. Uh, oh, come on, Coda. <laughs> it hates me. <laughs> I don't have Sublime. Oh, OK. Well. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do things 
really old school. Let's go administrator, components, com contact us, views, category, TMPL. <laughs> ah, right. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, sorry, this one should be my projects. Okay, and this one is going to be my sites. Demo, right? Administrator, components, contact us. Saving us the trouble, I'm just going to drag and drop my existing file from the project that I have already created to test everything. There we are. Yep. So I can now open it for editing. Of course, it opens with Xcode, which I don't want. Let's try again. Uh, now it opens. So this is my edit view. It's again an XML file uh, with a root element form. The only attribute I have here is validate true, which means that I want the JavaScript validations to run, to run on this view. I'm creating uh, a field set. The name of the field set doesn't have any uh, significance. It's just there for me to, to know what the field set is supposed to do. And I'm putting a label attribute to the field set so that it creates um, a small header inside the, the field set showing this translation string, which is going to read basic configuration. And then I'm creating my fields, uh, title field, email. This one doesn't exist in our example because it was getting a little too complicated. Yep. Uh, so the only thing that I'm putting inside this view is the title of the category, the email that uh, uh, all email items will be sent to in this category. and if this category is enabled, which means am I going to say to show it to the front end or not? Okay, so uh, the thing is that if I try right now, let me reload the page. Okay. It does work, but we haven't put any translation strings yet. So if you look at that, you don't quite understand what's supposed to say. To save us some time, I'm just going to the languages directory. I'm going to copy my translation files. There, reload the page. Much better, right? So let's create a category. Uh, let's say support request. And publish category, save and new. Uh, um, who broke the build? Yep, you know what I'm going. It's the same issue. It's the same issue. It's the same. I was sure about that. So you know what I'm going to do. Download. Yep. Don't worry. It's a very small package. So. Download. In my downloads directory, right? Uh, it 
it already has an IP address. Ah, okay. okay. 16100.2. Okay. Yeah. You've got me? Yeah. Okay. So let's go extension manager. Um, downloads. Let's try again. Something's going wrong. Um, I don't want to do that. The funny thing is that I'm going to use the alpha. <laughs> it's more stable than the stable. <laughs> Uh, normally, I would stop here and go debug the framework. <laughs> you can send the, the pull request, you know the drill. Okay. So, let's try uh, support request, email address, support at example.com, saving you. I don't know what's going on here. Probably, yes. It's double. Uh, so the, the valid date, the, the Joomla validator doesn't run. It has a bug. <sighs> but I know what I know what I'm going to do. That's why I hate live demos. N nothing ever works the same way as you tested it at home. <laughs> Never it's the whole it work. That's it. And we, we love it because uh, now we see that even you have uh, problems sometimes. Uh, he's <laughs> yeah. human. Only here. Here. <laughs> Only here. Only <laughs> here. So. We get video on this. Oh, you know what? It still doesn't run. It works. No? Mm, so the validator has a bug, which means that I am going to... False, false. Yes. <laughs> no JavaScript errors this time. So as I was saying... <laughs> don't do live demos. <laughs> do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. It's, it's, it's it, why does it still load? We have a book scratching session tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I can do? I can switch to Joomla 2.5 because... <laughs> so now that I'm on record, people don't use STS releases in production or for doing live demos. <laughs> No, the validator is uh, the core Joomla JavaScript. I haven't written a validator for FOF. I'm reusing the core. Uh, OK. So let's try again. Go to the categories. Yeah, you see Joomla 2.5, everything works. Uh, but this is not what I was looking for. Come contact us. Yep. Yeah. I think I know what I did here. Yep. Okay. So. Oh, it's because I'm connected to the internet, and I cannot unconnect. Yep. Joomla 
<laughs> FOF doesn't run on 1.5. It will run on 2.5 if I switch to master, I think, and not on development. You should also not work on your framework two days before doing a live presentation. Uh, If I disconnect from the network, you will going to lose my screen, right? Yeah, I lost it anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Everything that could go wrong in a presentation has gone wrong. In the worst possible way? In the worst possible way, yeah. Uh, yes, oh, <laughs> of course. Because I think that I have done the same thing, right? Uh, shit. Not this one. Um... I believe that if I go here, yep, let's try it again. I think you can reconnect with this everyone. Uh, if I reconnect, I'm <laughs> going to have problems again. <laughs> but also the internet is working now. Uh, that what uh, killed me before. So, uh, should I try? <laughs> yeah. There you have it. And what was the other thing? Support. You see that when my computer sees support, it just blows up. It says, no, no, please, no. <laughs> Save and close. Yes. Now we have our two uh, categories. The only problem is that uh, the ordering in Joomla 2.5 is not drag and drop. But anyway, I kind of demonstrated what I wanted. So since I'm going to use my existing sample component, I'm just going to switch to NetBeans and try to show you the code there. Contact us, right. Um, so the other two views that we're going to need is the items view, which is again a browse form following the same logic. And I know that you want me to increase the font size. Okay, much better. All right. So again, it's a form of the type browse. Um, Showing headers, filters, pagination, and having a placeholder if there are no rows. Um, the header items are, of course, uh, the ID, which will be the checkbox to select all rows. Um, then we have a, a special thing here, which is using uh, something that you should not really use, because this is kind of an obsolete way to do that. Um, we have the category ID and we want to show a list of categories so that we can filter by category. Uh, so I'm using uh, the type field SQL and then I'm using a query to query my, da my database table for the categories um, using the key field contact us category ID, which is the auto increment field and the value field is the title. So the drop down will contain the titles and we'll send the category ID to the query so that the filtering is performed. Um, then again, we have the from, email, created on, subject, and enabled fields using the respective field types. And then we have our, our field set, which shows all the items, and we have the same fields in the same order. Um, so let's go here in this view. Yeah, probably these warnings are something that I should fix. Yep. I, I found who the culprit was, by the way. Okay. Yes. I'm sure I did something. What did I do? Uh, when you abstracted it with the platform, yeah. um, you uh, included in the view, HTML view, uh, the check if it's not CLI, 
render the, the, the toolbar. Ah. The toolbar is actually rendered by the form class. So you double, double yep. render the toolbar. So you can just delete my code. <laughs> OK. Everything. Yep. So we can add a contact um, item from the back end using the, a, a similar form as we created before. Here it is, just a form with uh, validation turned on. On Joomla 2.5, at least it works. Um, we have a field set basic information where we have a drop-down box to select the category ID. And this is how you should do it instead of using a, a SQL field. You're, you, you can use a field of the type model, which is going to load automatically a, a model from FOF and use its, um, its data to render the dropdown. So I'm telling it that the model that I want to use is contact us model categories. So it's going to be uh, the categories of the com contact us component. Um, the key field that we want to use is the contact us category ID field. Um, and the value field is title. So instead of going directly through the database, it will create an object of this model and tell it to produce a listing, a listing of the fields and then create the, the dropdown, which is this dropdown. Then, of course, we have the uh, regular uh, text boxes for the name and email of the, of the user. Uh, the enabled field, which allows us to select if, if this is going to be a published or unpublished item. And then we have the subject, which is another simple text field. And this is a very neat field. The body field is of the type editor. And this automatically creates this kind of WYSIWG editor, the default WYSIWG editor we have selected in Joomla. And we can also choose the filtering method. So I'm using the J component helper filter text, which is the pretty much standard uh, HTML filter used by ch throughout uh, the entire CMS. Um, I'm telling it that I want to render all the buttons that go with, um, uh, with a YZWG editor, and that it's also a required field. So. There's something with my browser. I can tap to the field. I cannot click on the field. OK. No problem. Anything else that can go wrong? I don't know. <laughs> you might not be able to submit a contact. Yeah, it looks like it. Just something. Yeah, of course, warnings. Uh, I can't believe that. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, normally I should be able to see a list of items over here. Yeah, that's interesting. Is it saved in the database? Hmm? I can find out. Uh, no, it's not saved, and I know why. <sighs> yeah, well. Whatever. Yeah, much better. If you create a table with a correct prefix, it does work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you have all the regular amenities, like you can click and unpublish an item. There's a question. When yep. you save it, 
or just an example of Tom could not be yep. blah, blah, blah. Just yep. check if it's a fellow team or whatever. Uh, I will show you in a few okay. what I was doing. So by default, FOF would simply save um, this item. But since it's a contact component, we also want this item to be sent by email. So this is when you have to override the model. But in this component, I didn't create the model in the back end. I created it in the front end inside the models directory the items.php file, and I created uh, the model class contact us model items, which extends FOF model. And instead of rewriting the save method, I'm just creating a protected function on after save, which is our, uh, it, it's the FOF model's hook, which runs right after the save method, the save method in the model executes. So as soon as something is saved, I want it to be sent by email. So this is what I'm doing. I'm getting the standard Joomla mailer. I'm setting um, the from email uh, name from what is uh, sent to me by the user. Um, I load the, the category using FOF model get TMP instance, which creates a temporary object instance of the model. Of the model categ of the yep of the model categories with a prefix contact us model so it's the categories model for com contact us and then I'm getting a specific item uh, using the model and the ID of the item that I'm fetching is the one that was uh, selected by the user so the user selects a category um, I get it here I put it in the in the categories model and I'm getting an object which is my category. So then I said, I, I, I'm saying to the mailer that the, the, the recipient of the email will be the email address of this category. And then I'm setting the subject um, by, um, uh, where it is? By using a, a sprintf and a string which says that this is the name of the category, this is the subject the user defined, so that I know uh, what I'm receiving this email about. And then I'm just setting the body of the contact that I received from the user as the HTML part of the email and sending the email. But because I'm using an at example.com address, which which doesn't validate, jmailer is throwing back an error. If I were using real email addresses, I would just receive the email. And that's pretty much all the PHP code that you need to write for this component. Because even in the front end, um, when you want to render um, a page for the user to submit a, a, a contact, um, request, you just need to create an XML form, which is very similar to the one you have in the back end. So you just have them select the contact category using the same method, using a model field. Um, let them specify their name and email address using input boxes. Their subject, again using an input box. The body using a WASIGUG editor. And then you can also put here a CAPTCHA field and the automatic JavaScript validator in Joomla will make sure that the CAPTCHA is entered correctly. Otherwise, they will not be able to submit their contact information. And because it's the front end and I normally don't have a toolbar, I have this uh, submit button, which is just a field of the type button. Uh, and since the default operation of a button is to submit the form it's in, it will submit the form. That's pretty much it. So if you want to see it, how it looks in the front end. In Joomla 2.5, it looks a bit cramped. This was designed to run on Joomla 3, but yeah, something happened during the last four days. 
Yeah. Someone broke the build. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as you can see in Joomla 2.5, I'm doing some stupid things like outputting a label here, which shouldn't be there. Pretend that you're not seeing that. Uh, yeah. I can try the same thing on Joomla 3.1. So this is what it should be looking like. And if the internet, if I had an internet connection, I would be seeing a CAPTCHA. It's working for half an hour now. It's working? Yeah. Let me try. So, if the internet does work, <coughs> yay! Of course, I have no idea what it says. <laughs> E K S A K S R A P H P H yeah yeah it's much easier to read there <laughs> so <laughs> here I have uh, I think I have really probably I have real email addresses so let me try from test user. Uh, Yep. Uh, K S R A P H. Yeah, probably. Yes. And now you, you may be wondering how I got this thank you page in the front end. I cheated. I told you that I'm not going to write any more PHP code. I lied. You copy pasted it. No, no I, I just lied. I wrote a little bit of PHP code. So I have overridden my controller, the controller for the item, because remember that we're submitting an item. And here's what I did. I created a protected function called on after save. And you can guess when this is called after the save task is executed. So instead of redirecting back to the items view, which I don't want, I said, OK, I'm going to redirect to another view called thank you. Of course, we haven't created a table called thank you. No problem. Because thank you is uh, singular. It would normally create an add view which would show us a form.php file, because that's the FOF convention. So I created this form.php file, which only shows this static message, thank you. And now I have a complete contact form component. And if I'm lucky... <laughs> You're pushing it, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the back end, and if I'm lucky, I will be able to see all the contact uh, items that ha have been entered there. If the back end loads, of course. Well, while it's loading, I have a question. This is uh, the edit form is a singular XML file. Can you use something like load any template in there to get? Yeah, of course. You can do whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't restrict you. The conventions are there if you don't want to write code. If you want to write code... Okay, but within the XML file, say that I want to have our XML file. Uh, uh, no. From inside the XML file, you cannot do that because we haven't created a field, a field type to do that. Yeah, okay. If we create a field type for that, then yes, no, you... I mean, I've done it with, it with just HTML ones. I'm just wondering if I could do it with XML. Yeah, right now you can't. Okay. That's a good uh, request. You can... So, you, you no, know, <laughs> if you don't feel like writing the code, you can uh, just create an issue. Uh, it will be fixed sometime. Uh, you have uh, created a pull request? Not yet. Not okay. We don't have a right working Wi-Fi. Ah. Uh, 
Okay. So let's go to contact us. Hey, this thing is working. That's why it's working. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> well, it's it's working except for the double. Uh, but you told me where the bug is, yeah. it so. It's FOF uh, HTML view. Uh, Pre-render should be the method, and you, you just comment out. <laughs> I know that they're not required. I just meant it, so. so <laughs> it's your fault if something else goes wrong now. Uh, so there we have it. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed up the HTML view. Yeah. So, you see, I did something stupid. You didn't switch to develop. Yep. <sighs> so. <laughs> I can fix the the master branch later. I can just revert it. So, am I on the correct? Right? Yep. So now that I have internet, um, I have internet. You don't. Yeah. So there you are. <laughs> I just committed a bug fix during my session because people were expecting me to do that. I didn't plan to have a bug. Uh. I didn't. So there we have, uh, including all the tests that I was doing a few days ago, you can see that uh, the very first version that I have done of this component was uh, at the end of April. And obviously, in the meantime, I screwed up everything. OK. And this is the support request we just uh, put in here, we can see it, everything is here, this is fine. Okay, so now our component, let me scroll back to my component, our component is almost complete, except for one thing. Let me rename a file that I have created, because I want to show you what this thing does. If you go to the front end and try to access the component, you can't because we don't have a default view. So normally, you would have to specify that the view that I want is item. Uh, of course, Yeah, you know why I get a 403? Because I'm trying to enter an, an add view in the front end without being logged in, which means that I don't have the core edit privilege, so I cannot submit anything. So very correctly, FOF tells me you're not allowed to do that. So I need a way to tell FOF which is going to be the default view and which are going to be the ACL privileges that I need for each view. Normally, I would need to write code. But in FOF, you can create a file called FOF.xml in the back end. And you can have the configuration of your component in an XML file. The root element is FOF. Then we have the, the back end uh, root element. These are options which only apply to the back end of the component. Then we have the dispatcher options. This is documented. Yes, this documentation is written. And we choose the default view 
to be items, which means that whenever I'm calling my component in the back end, it's going to show me a list of contact items. So let me go over here and say option equals com contact us. <laughs> I'm on the wrong side, of course. Let me close the other windows. Administrator, come contact us. Yeah. And we're in the items. If you're on the correct side, it does work. OK, so I could change that to categories. And look what happens. Now we're seeing the categories by default. So there you have it. You can configure whatever you want to do in the back end of your component. In the front end, we can do the same thing. The default view that we want is item, because we want to be able to submit a new contact item. And then we can define the ACL settings. So I only want to allow front end access to the uh, to the add view, oops, to the add view of the sorry to the add task of the item view, so that people can submit uh, new contact requests. I want everybody to have access to that view. And I don't want them to have access to any other view except that and the thank you page. All right? So how do I do that? First, I say that for all views, the default ACL I want for all tasks is false, which means do not allow access to anything. And I'm going to tell it what I want to, uh, to allow access to. So for the item view, I want everything to map to the add view, all tasks to map to the add view. This means that no matter if I call the component by itself, specify view equals item or specify view equals items, singular or plural, uh, no matter what the task is going to be selected by the dispatcher, it's always going to end to the add, to the add task so that I can um, submit a contact request. And the ACL settings that I want for the add and save tasks display the form and actually submit the, sub the contact request is going to be empty so as to allow everybody without any specific ACL check to submit a, a contact request. And for the thank you page, I'm doing the same thing. I'm redirecting all views to the add task and say that the add task doesn't need any special privileges to be displayed. So anything else that I try in this component in the front end, view calls items, uh, Oh, I know what's the, this isn't working. Uh, I, I didn't fix the bug yesterday, did I? When I pulled when I pulled in your pull request. Yeah, yeah. So you, that's an that's a known bug. Twice I fixed it. That's why I see ignored it. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the second time I told you that. Yeah, I know what you did there, but I was too tired to. In, to integrate it, yeah. It should be in the dispatcher, no, no it. Config, uh, provider for views. I think I'm, I'm going to do a second bug fix. See? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The views under the last method should be get whatever, get, get option. It is, it's get config, should it be get option or, get option. Yeah. or the other way around? No. It's a slightly different bug than the one we thought it is. Anyway, this is something that I am going to fix. As you understand, uh, FOF 2.1 is still in beta. And we're trying to iron out all the issues. It's a really bad uh, point in time to do live demos. But then again, I'm doing a live demo. <laughs> anyway.
so normally it should just get me back to the uh, item submission view instead of throwing a 403. But yeah. If I just access the component, the important bit is that this thing works. Uh, that's it. I was hoping that I, there would be <laughs> no, there would be less bugs. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do the next few days? <laughs> yeah, bug fixing. Uh, so, questions? Yeah, it's basically the same uh, format that you're going to use in your access.xml file. Okay, yeah. So it, it doesn't matter. Well, the, the Joomla convention is that if you're creating custom ACL privileges, you should prefix them with uh, your component's name. It's not mandatory, but if you don't, then someone else will get very pissed. Yeah. Um, Yes, yes, uh, yeah, let me show that. Um, you just have to do that. FOF dispatcher, get TMP instance, the name of the component you want. And if you're calling it from a, a module, you have to specify uh, the other two arguments, which are the view name, and if you want to pass any input data to your uh, component. And this way, you can render uh, a view directly there. Even uh, override the, some, some, some data for free, for example. Yeah. You can uh, choose uh, whatever you want. I mean, mm, in the third parameter, which is the options, you can specify an input object and say that the task in this input object is I don't know, browse to display a list of records or read and then give an ID to display just a specific record. It's up to you. Uh, it's like um, accessing a component. Instead of using a URL, you're pushing the input data in this object. Uh, other questions? Yep. <coughs> Uh, we don't have a default router. Uh, I thought about creating one, but it's very implementation specific. You can't create an abstract router the way Joomla works right now. So yeah, I, I know you were hoping that I would tell you that yes, there is a default router and I'm going to take away the pain, but <laughs> no, sorry. Component where you have a language set on an item. Um, the language is usually just uh, say correctly. Either start all languages or I think a few things. Mm -hmm. How do you filter the languages? Yeah, you have just the calling language. You have. Uh, you have to customize your model because FOF doesn't help that automatically. So I have the same thing. I have the same thing in the release system. Uh, let's go to models. Probably uh, I have something like that over here. Yep. So I'm just get getting the language here. Or language in uh, star, comma, your language and... I think now it works out of the box. Because with the new filter system... Yeah. If it's... If but it's you... Thing, it should already do that. It wouldn't put the star in there. Ah, yeah, true. You would have to, to send the, the star in the URL. Otherwise, you can just uh, do that. Oops. You can just do that the same way I'm doing it in uh, release system and... Filter everything by language. Uh, 
item is locked by another user, you can hover your mouse over and you can see the username. Yeah. And that is not default in Fog. No. If you're using the XML forms, it is. Because you, you need to have this uh, special checkbox field that if it's locked, it uh, shows the tooltip. I'm not sure if the tooltip is shown if you're using FOF because this is probably expecting uh, names like uh, checked out by and checked out time, but you're not using those in FOF. Yeah, you can do that. You need to be using the, the uh, yes. I think you can override that with some extra parameters if you're using the PHP view templates. Uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Let me see. I should have something like that over here. Um, Yeah, uh, yes. I'm using the old The old one is the grid ID, right? It's not the new one. Yeah. Yes, I don't have a one with a new one. Uh, the new JFORM something, what's it called? I can't remember by heart the field. Uh, you can give it some parameters to tell it if it is checked out and who has checked it out. So it will create the um, the, the tooltip. I've recently playing with the XML files as opposed to the XML files to see if I can make it work. <laughs> yep. Uh, anyone else? No? Okay. Uh, that's all. I was hoping that it could go smoother. Yeah. Ne next time I will do a presentation against a stable version. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.